everybody, how's it going? This is Caleb with devslopes.com and I am so, so excited to teach you all about Mapbox, which is an incredible framework that allows you to build experiences for exploring the world. You can add location into any application with their mapping, navigation, and location search SDKs. There is literally so much packed into this and it supports iOS, Android, JavaScript, Unity, and Qt right out of the box. Really, really cool stuff, and I want to show you the quick iOS app we're going to build in this section, and it's right here. So basically what it's doing is it is showing the map box map view. It's showing the user location, and it is tracking their location. When the user clicks the navigate button, what it's going to do is it's going to take their location, generate a route from them to Disneyland, and then if they tap the annotation and click start navigation, what it's going to do is it's going to pull open turn by turn directions with voice commands, which you can toggle on or off. You can view the entire route and resume. And you can even um, propose things that are going on in the real world. And that information will be sent straight to Mapbox so their maps become better over time. It is incredibly powerful. And what I'm going to show you how to build this, it's going to take about 60 lines of code, which is incredible for how robust of an experience you actually get. So I'm going to go ahead and pull open the Xcode project that I have set up here. What I've done is I've already gone ahead and installed the um, Mapbox navigation, Mapbox core navigation directions, and the Mapbox iOS SDK. All these other frameworks come as a part of installing Mapbox and Mapbox directions. So those um, CocoaPods have already been installed at this point, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import them so that we can use them. So go ahead and type import Mapbox, import Mapbox um, core navigation, import Mapbox navigation, and import Mapbox directions. Okay, and those are the four frameworks that we're going to be using um, in this project. And if there's an error here, don't worry. We'll do a quick little clean and build of our project, and that error will go away. Now we're good to go. Now um, it's going to take a while to build because it's compiling all of the frameworks I've just added. But what we're going to do first is get a map view displaying on our screen. Okay, so first, let's go ahead and let's get rid of did receive memory warning, and let's dive into view did load. What we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of navigation map view, and that's a specific type of uh, view controller provided by Mapbox that allows us to um, perform navigation and turn by turn directions. So let's go ahead and let's create a variable called map view and make it of type navigation map view. Okay. We're going to go ahead and in view did load actually initialize that by typing map view equals navigation navigation map view and we're going to go ahead and initialize that with a frame now i'm not sure if you noticed but there is another option here that allows us to create one with a style and we can pass in a url and you can actually use a custom created style from mapbox studio which is incredibly powerful we'll talk about that later but for now we're just going to go ahead and pass in the view dot bounds to make the map view cover the entire screen then we need to go ahead and set the auto resizing mask so that it has a flexible width and height so that when we rotate the device, it looks nice. So type map view dot uh, auto resizing mask and it's going to be an array. We're going to pass in flexible width and flexible height. And that way, when we turn our device, it'll look nice and clean. So um, finally, in order to get this map view to show up, all you need to do is type view dot add sub view and pass in the map view. I'm not even kidding. That is literally how simple it is to get a map view to show up on our screen. So let's actually build and run our uh, demo application here. Oh, let's verify. Let's see what's going on. We're having an error show up. Um, Swift compiler error. Ah, okay, so uh, it looks like I misspelled that. It should be map box directions. And now let's go ahead and head into our project really quickly. We need to actually set up a very special thing in our info.plist file. We're going to need to actually add our Mapbox um, access token. And so what we're going to do to do that is we're going to basically create a new key and the value we're going to go ahead and use our access token from Mapbox. We're going to paste it in there and now we have access to everything that we need to. 
Additionally, you're going to need to set up the um, when in use usage location uh, key for their location. So choose location when in use usage description and type something like this. Shows your location on the map and helps improve OpenStreetMap. Okay, because it's going to request their um, location permissions and uh, we are good to go now. So our access token lets us access Mapbox and all of the cool stuff that we have there. So let's go ahead and build and run this. Let's see how it worked and we'll see if we get a nice pretty map view from our simulator. Let's take a look. And look at that. We have a Mapbox map showing up on our screen. Looks super nice and when you run this on an actual device, it is buttery smooth. We're gonna be a little bit slow, obviously because of the simulator, but let me assure you, when this is running on a device, it is super, super smooth. So there's Portland, that's where I'm from. And uh, man, this is just a really, really nice map interface. Super easy, I mean, look how much code we had to write to get a map view to show up. That's seriously the simplest thing. Now, um, I think that we should try to show the user's location. And so to do that, all you need to do is type map view, dot show user location equals true that's it and what it's going to do is it's going to request authorization from a core location it's going to display the user's location on our map and that's that it's that easy but before this will work we need to actually set the delegate of our map view uh, which also will give us access to all of the delegate methods that are included which is a really helpful thing so go ahead and type map view dot delegate and set it to be equal to self. But of course, we need to conform to that protocol first. So go ahead and conform to MGL map view delegate, uh, which is there. And uh, there we go. We've now set the map views delegate to be self. And at this point, we can go ahead and rerun our app and see how we did. So click build and run, and we'll see if we are showing a user's location. Here we go, very cool. So it's gonna ask us for permission. We click allow, and if I scroll over, look at that, we have user location showing up. No need to import core location or do any kind of you know, finicky uh, stuff with permissions. It handles it for you, which is amazing. So user location is now done. That could not have been easier. Um, we're also gonna actually set up the user tracking mode so that the map will follow the user. So go ahead and type map view dot set user tracking mode. And we're gonna go ahead and just set it to be follow like so. And we'll say animated yes, so that it kind of zooms in and then starts following them. So there's that. And now I wanna go ahead and add the button to the bottom of the screen here, which had our ability to start the navigation. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste in a function that I wrote that is essentially going to create a button and add it to our view um, programmatically. So now that that function is in place, I'm gonna just call it here, add button, and it's gonna programmatically add a button to the view controller. However, there is a selector called navigation button was pressed and that function is going to be called as soon as the button is pressed, thanks to its target. So I'm gonna add that function in for now, which of course will not do anything yet, but we need to actually set up a variable called navigate button up at the top. So go ahead and type var navigate button of type UI button. And now all of these little errors should go away. If I rebuild this application and run it to the simulator, we should see um, the button show up right at the bottom of the screen, perfectly centered. Here we go, did we do it? Beautiful, look at that. We've got a nice uh, pill-shaped button with the navigate text in matte box blue, by the way, with a nice drop shadow. So very cool stuff. When we tap it, the uh, selector here, navigate button was pressed, is triggered. And right now, we have a beautiful map view. We have a button that can be triggered to perform certain actions. And in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set up uh, what we need to do to actually calculate a route from where we are to where we want to go, which is Disneyland. So I'll see you in the next video.